Hi everyone! Today we have been releasing the latest version of Qt, namely 6.6. .6. In this video, we want to provide some of the highlights of that release. Overall, we have been looking into how we can simplify the creation of complex user interfaces and also provide more high-level capabilities so that you, in a much easier way, can then provide these user interfaces in your applications and products. From that, I want to highlight two major new additions. Number one is support for responsive layouts. Responsive layouts is a technology coming from the web-based solutions, which basically entails and gives you the functionality that based on your screen sizes, your target screens, you can modify and adapt your controls and elements inside that UI. Meaning, if you have a small user interface or a small screen, you then make some items disappear or reduce the amount of data visible. While you have the same application running on, on a large screen, you can represent much more data. As I'm talking about data already, that leads me to the other part, which is the introduction of Qt Graphs. Qt Graphs is a new module which focuses on data visualization. And it especially focuses on having lots and lots of live data from multiple sources, getting these combined, and then visualizing them in, in a complex manner like 3D scenarios, etc., etc. The big difference to our previous solution, Qt Data Visualization, is that we are now fully utilizing Qt Quick 3D as well, which then makes it possible to get as much performance as possible for these live representations. As I talked about the introduction of new modules, we also took care of the onboarding process, you could say, of for you as our users. What is extremely crucial these days is that it's as easy as possible to learn the tech new technologies, either if you're new to Qt or of the new features inside of our products. And for that reason, we have been looking into all of our examples, have been revamping them, have been modernizing them, but also looked into which of these provide values in which part. You will see in the latest Qt Creator release all these examples shown also with a new categorization, highlights, starring, etc. So that makes it much easier for you to adapt and learn about the latest Qt technology. Having said that, one thing which always surrounds you and guides you as a developer as well is the tooling around the programming languages. We have been putting significant effort as well into our QML tooling, specifically QML Lint, which helps you write the correct code, um, the QML Language Server Protocol, which helps in the integration of QML support into other IDEs, as well as updates within the Qt Quake compilers, which then guide you to create the most performant applications as well with Qt Quake. Another item which we have been introducing with Qt 6 already is the RHI, or the Rendering Hardware Interface. The RHI basically helps to abstract 3D commands based on your target hardware, so where you have OpenGL, DirectX, Vulkan, etc., or Metal. And RHI basically takes care of that you have one language to then target all of these functionalities. From our users, we got the feedback that they would also utilize the RHI in their project directly, not indirectly from Qt Quick. And in this release, we're taking a first step towards that direction by providing some APIs so that you can also utilize RHI in your project. Moving on to our web-based offering, specifically Qt for WebAssembly. We have been introducing Qt for WebAssembly since quite some time now to provide the functionality of bringing Qt towards the web. There has been lots of feedback from, from the users in that respect, but with the static linking we have been providing with Qt for WebAssembly, startup times, were a bit rough. The reason for that is with static linking, you're always downloading the whole binary. So with 6.6, .6, we're providing now dynamic linking support in Qt for WebAssembly. The big advantage for that is that you are providing the Qt libraries side by side with the application binary, and by that are capable then of using the caches of the browsers and have your startup time significantly reduced once you're loading the application or the web page for the second time. And lastly, let's not forget about Qt for Python, which provides the bindings to Qt um, to the Python language. 
We have been working a lot and the team has been working a lot on simplifying many things when it comes to the commercial wheel support, specifically the tool called Qt Pip, but also generally our commercial wheels for our Python users. Naturally, as with every release of Qt, we have been looking into the quality side of things as well. That means we have been fixing lots of bugs of various severity level and also have been broadening the amount of embedded boards supported from various vendors. With having said that, I want to thank you and I hope I have been providing a quick glimpse on what's coming with 6.6. .6. If you want to have further information and really and hear about all the new things within that release, please head along to blog.q.io where you will find the release posts and all further details also as well. In addition to that, please come to the World Summit where you will see further information of all the features within that release but also get much more information on what we are up to in the future.